Ray Williams talks about that famous Troubadour show in L.A. in 1970 with Elton John again. But on this one, we talk about the band. They were a trio. D. Murray, Nigel Olsen, Elton John. That's our subject this week on Rock History Music. Everyone likes to talk about trios and rock and roll. There have been many. But sometimes folks forget the North American debut for Elton John at the Troubadour featured an Elton John trio. Drummer Nigel Olsen was up there and Dee Murray, who we lost a few years ago. What I can say about Dee is that he was, I mean, he was a wonderful. In fact, the three of them were just brilliant because the sound they created, three people, I mean, it was just unbelievable. And I think that's what surprised people at the Troubadour that night, seeing drums, bass, guitar, and, and, and then hearing the sound that came out of it. I think he was a, a very gifted, melodic bass player. He was just, he added so much. And yet, as a person, he was just the loveliest uh, guy. I really miss him, you know, because they, what Nigel and Dee did, they were the bookends that they were the things that glued it together when you see what they what Elton went through and all the rest of it it must be very difficult for them on, on occasion how was Nigel and D at the Troubadour how were they before the show were they as no, nervous no, or no, well I mean they just it was exciting for them and uh but they were pretty just as Elton but Elton had to do the singing they were the musicians they were professional musicians that had been around they played and, and I think uh, everybody must have been nervous. I'm sure of that, you know, if you ever speak to Nigel. When's the last time you talked mm-hmm. to Elton? It's been years, right? Yeah, the, the, there's been commute. Funny enough, the last time we sat down and had dinner was 1992. I was making, um, they asked me if I would do a, a video called Two Rooms, you know, the Two Rooms Project, which was a tribute to him. And they had a book, and they had a video. They made an album of different people singing their songs. And um, so I, I was at the shoot and doing the interview at my old office, which is at Metropolis Studios. After I was, um, well, virtually, I'd nearly finished the interview. It was quite a long one. A little girl came up and said, will you sign this clearance? And I said, well, sure. And I looked at it. It was like for five pounds. <laughs> Things like this, news, th- th- these are... It's our duty to talk about history and stuff like that. It's, it, and we're trying, everybody helps each other. But when it comes to something that's a pure commercial exercise, as this was with Polygram, it was a big, big thing. I said, are you serious? I said, I, I'm not signing that. Tell John Reed to call me. I actually wrote to Elton. And I said, dear Elton, blah, blah, blah. I, I won't go into the, the detail of it, but I thought it was a pretty good letter. And immediately... John Reed called back and said, Elton wants to see you, he's, he's really upset, blah, 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 blah. And the long story of it is we had, uh, we, we ended up having uh, dinner in Paris. He was recording the uh, one album and uh, I was on my way down to meet him. And so what we did was to, we met at the studio in, uh, I think it's Guillaume Tell Studios in uh, Paris and he played me the one and you know it was there very sadly that he told me that d was very ill and uh that was really sad so we arranged to have dinner in the evening that's you know it was the beginning of where he had given up you know it was, the sobriety stuff was all coming in and he'd given up the drugs and everything and it was a it was at maxime's I always remember i was about 10 minutes late and he's sitting in the middle of Maxime's on his own. And of course, being such a well-known chap, people are just staring at him. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's the last time we had a, a proper conversation. However, they've invited me to Charlotte. They were playing here in Raleigh. My wife was here and I rang up. I, I sent a note to Bernie, actually. And I said, said Bernie, uh, I'm here. It'd be quite nice to go and see Elton's last show. He sent a thing to their office. And in fact, I got something back the day after just saying, David Furnish is absolutely upset that they couldn't entertain you here. Uh, would you be their guests in Charlotte? So I would imagine I'll see them in That'd be nice. no- November the 6th. Yeah. I mean, it's, God, there's so, so much to talk about. But the other thing, of course, the film it, is sort of, uh, it'll be interesting to see him and to meet up. And I'm sure it, it'll, it'll happen. 
Well, I felt good about the film. I mean, I'm not part of this story, obviously, but when I saw it, and that's why when I reached out, I said, I've got to get Ray. Um, I was, that's why I said, I've got to tell him. I was so happy to see you in there. But my thought of that is he didn't have to include, that didn't have to be included. Well. It should have been included. It had to be, but it didn't have to be. I mean, films leave out big parts of the story all the time. I was I was here. My wife was in England. I was here. It was a Sunday night, and we were watching the Academy Awards. I was watching the Academy Awards. I had a glass of wine and a you know, lovely Sunday evening thing. I think it was somewhere near the end, and they, it was the best actor or best actress, and then it was going to be the best film. And there's a break, and I see this ad. Coming soon, Rocket Man. And then I see this little guy with his feet up on the table. And I thought... Whoa, is that meant to be me? And I went to the uh, computer and I typed in, who plays Ray Williams in Rocket Man? And up came Charlie Rowe, so it was me. That was a weird thing, a weird way to find out. And when I met Charlie in London, we, we were talking about it. And he said, uh, yeah, he said, when I, when I first did it, that there weren't uh, so many bits in it, but they added lots more, which is uh, very nice. Yeah, that's cool. What would you whisper in your 23-year-old self's ear, knowing what you know now? Anything? Oh, probably a little bit more business acumen, and maybe... But you were learning on the fly, though, back then. You were like, oh, you, yeah. there was no time for... You're not going to take a course, I mean... No, no, that that was the problem. I, I, but no, you, you couldn't do it. You can't wind it back anyway. So I, I try not to... You know, sometimes you say, oh, I wish I had a... You know, I really have been educated, blah, blah, blah. But I have been educated in, in a totally different way to a lot of other people. And it's very interesting. I remember we were talking a little earlier and you said, you know, you can remember back when you were in a moment, but you didn't realize it was a moment. It only becomes a moment years later. And um, it's rather nice that I've been involved. I've done things that I would never have done if I'd worked for a corporation i've been to places i was i haven't you know i was in east berlin when the wall came down just been in weird places i feel like a a musical forest gump sometimes <laughs> you know so it it's um it's been a very interesting and continues to be a very interesting way of living and you know and who knows what happens next make sure you comment on our videos and subscribe to our channel and share our videos more from ray williams next week Buy a t-shirt if you want to support the channel. We're hiring some video editors so we can get these videos out to you sooner. Links in the description of this video. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music.